Ricky, can I say something that you may hate? Go on. I think you, I think you should have a kid. Right. OK. <laughs> Uh, in what way? Be a father or just have a kid? Go and get one, go no, and... No, I, I think you should have a family, because I've always thought about you and Simon Cowell. Whenever I read your interviews, I always think there's something missing. I think you make a great dad. Me and Simon Cowell, if he's up for it. <laughs> I'm Fred. Do you hate that question? Uh, no, no, I feel a sitcom coming on. Yeah. But... Ricky and Simon adopted a kid. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, Ricky, what are you doing? I... Hey, I'm doing what I'm, I'm bathing the baby, Simon. <laughs> you don't bath it like that. It's already written. Good one. Talking of sitcoms, you and Stephen Merchant are working on a new project. First yes. there was The Office, then there was Extras. Tell us about the third one. This one's called um, Life's Too Short, and it shows... It's sort of a fake documentary. It's about um, the life of Warwick Davis, who's a real person, but this is a, a twisted version of And he's child. a dwarf, right? He is. Why bring that up? No, I don't know. Chris is telling me he's about to... I've got to do this. Sorry, um, Warwick, if you're... He doesn't know he's a dwarf, he just thinks... <laughs> I've been all fun now, yes, he's, 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 No, he, he did, oh, we haven't told him. He just... It, uh, no, he doesn't know. Well... Because he's, he's, he's blind as well. So he, no one's told him he's a dwarf. So now he knows. Well, now he, he does know. First right. time of the night. Um, and it's, um, it's about him um, having a sort of... Uh, a bit of a midlife crisis and his, his um, career's on the skid, so he's done this sort of reality show to try and get famous. And myself and Stephen play twisted versions of ourselves as well. Well, good luck with that. Got it. Right then, today is Thanksgiving <laughs> in the good old US of A. God bless both of them. It's Thanksgiving today. Happy Thanksgiving. Carl's going to tell us what it's all about. Ricky, what are Carl's qualifications as some kind of international culture guru? He hasn't got any. <laughs> really? I miss it. Are you going to tell Seriously, I, I don't know why you got me on for this bit. <laughs> <laughs> so you could plug your video. Come well, on. Yeah, that starts out. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now you're going to do this bit. It's just a... Uh... Uh, before you do that, should we have a clip? Yeah, we'll quickly, Is there yeah. a clip of you by Christ in Rio? Here it is. So come on, Carl, that was pretty good. You are the idiot abroad, you're now the idiot with the turkey. Tell us about Thanksgiving. Uh, Can we I show that turkey? We, we, it looks lovely we're... there, doesn't it? But look what they were facing us. That's, what they, that's the view that was facing us. <laughs> is, any, right? is anyone doing this in this country? Would anyone... Yes, of course. Yeah. There's some Americans over here, people who have American relatives. It's a big night for those guys. But well, would they be watching this anyway, yes, then? Yes, they will. They be eating... This is their pre-Thanksgiving show they watch it every year. Tell uh, us about the origin, Carl. I told you about this. We got a, I've got a podcast out about <laughs> called Thanksgiving, free on iTunes. Give now. us... Give, and I was telling I you about the one power Indians. I wouldn't, they... I wouldn't worry. It's mainly... I mean, anything with Americans, they like eating. Yeah. So they tend to... No, I'm not having a go. That's right. That's a fact. <laughs> so... But they've, they've definitely have gone off the no, turkey listen, now, because it looks listen, like Arnie Nora from Listen to what they what? eat. What? There's a thing that they eat called Tadunkan. Right. And what they do, they get a turkey, they shove a chicken in that, and shove a duck in that, and that's why it's a Tadunkan. Duncan yeah. Type thing. Excellent. Okay. What? Round of applause for that one. Thank you. Cheers, Carl. Well, thanks to you both, uh, and good luck with your DVD <laughs> battle in the charts of a Christmas. Yeah, who's going to win the battle of the DVDs, guys? Idiot abroad. It's, I think it's n number one or two or something. Only I think only Top Gear's beating it. Top Gear. Who's still watching Top? Just turn Dave on. <laughs> it's on every night. All right. Uh, thanks, Ricky. Giving. Thanks, Carl, for being on the program. If you do win an award tonight. Don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right, come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your God. And so... Mel Gibson, come on. No, come on. I'm not going to have a go at him. He's been through a lot. <laughs> not as much as the Jews. To be fair. You're so <laughs> macho, aren't you? I know, I know. It's a You're so tough. I'm glad you've got your shirt on. <laughs> you always have to show a bit of that, don't you? No, no, no. It's I'm... for the menopause of women. No, goes, oh, look, he's <laughs> taking his shirt off. He walked to the restaurant the other week no. carrying a stag. Who do you think you are? Four. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'll leave you with one final story, right? It's another true story. If I say they're true, by the way, they are. I promise, they're all true. And this is probably my favourite school story ever. It was 1976 again, so uh, I was about 14. And we had a kid in our class called Gary Masterman. And Gary developed Tourette's syndrome. Like, every sentence of the swear word in it. He had a tick. Cos we learned all about it in assembly. Gary was up there, all the teachers knew him, all the kids knew him. He was a popular lad, right? And, um... Yeah, nice guy, uh, Gary Masterman. But sometimes 
is tick seemed relevant. And I'll never forget, we were having this lesson with a young female teacher called Miss Wilkie. She was at the blackboard and she was doing those calling out suggestions. I can't remember what it was about, but she'd go, um, Simon, what do you think? Yeah, that's good. Yes, that works, yeah. Brian, what do you... Yeah, yeah, good, yeah. And she went, Gary. He went, I'll finger you, miss. <laughs> and she just went, anyone else? <laughs> and she pointed to Sean Dixon and Sean went, yeah, I'll finger you. <laughs> Everybody, you went to the Achilles heel of everybody. Like when you tell a woman who's, you know, that her, that it's, you know, she looks old. That just hits a woman who's, deep in the. Who, 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 I think you said something about the Sex in the City women, like about. I said it was airbrushed, and I said we hair... now we know how old you are, girls. I saw one of you in a in an episode of Bonanza. Okay. Right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, I was saying, why lie? There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with being 50 or looking 50. But you're not a woman. I don't, yeah, but, but, and I, I get you. I but get I don't you. think you lose your sensuality at 50. I've, I've, only, I've only got a day to live. I said, what do you want to do? <laughs> And then, and then when that didn't happen, why is it? And then when that didn't happen... Make a wish foundation. No. I'd like to go on Jimmy Fallon, please. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's not what you said. No. No, no I didn't. You, yeah, you want to do something else. And then I said anything but Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon. Fallon. Yeah. The world got to see James Corden as a fat pussy. <laughs> he was also in the movie Cats, but no one saw that. Um, and the reviews, oh, shocking. I saw one that said, this is the worst thing to happen to cats since dogs, right? <laughs> but Dame Judi Dench defended the film, saying it was the role she was born to play, because she... I can't do this next joke. <laughs> because she loves nothing better than plonking herself down on the carpet, lifting her leg and licking her... Furball, furball. She's old school. Um, did anyone have a pedo teacher when they were at school? Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Round of applause for pedo teachers, yeah. <laughs> That's another thing. I think where people are now trying to be so politically correct, they're trying to outwoke each other. Soon someone's going to say, you can't say pedo anymore. It's a derogatory term. It, it, it offends people who are child addicted, right? <laughs> so you're going to have people going to the doctor going, doctor, I think I'm child addicted, right? And the doctor go, oh, you poor thing. How do you feel? I feel like I want to fiddle with kids. Right? <laughs> that is one of the symptoms. But, uh, don't worry, sit down. We'll get you into a facility at taxpayers' expense, right? And we'll we're, we're wean you off children. Uh, how does that work, doctor? Well, you know, like when they give heroin addicts methadone, yeah? Well, we're going to start you on dwarves, right? <laughs> <laughs> it might work. It might. <laughs> You've, but are you into Harry? I think because he's British, like yeah. a superstar, you'd be into him. But you're, are you into Harry? Well, uh, yeah, he's fine. But why do you think? Because he's British, I'm into him. Kind of. We, we've got as many idiots as you. <laughs> I don't have to be into everyone. <laughs> British, do I? This new thing in England is celebrities having depression. Oh, I feel all depressed. It's always, it's always overprivileged performers that have these bouts of depression. You don't have blue collar workers, you know, working class mums with six children having, I feel a bit depressed. Do you? Get the kids to school. Oh, yeah. You know, I just think of these guys on minimum wage reading articles about going, oh, look at this. This poor millionaire comedian, he feels all alienated. I wish there's something I could do, but I lost my fingers. But as I say, I'm going to be nice tonight. I've changed. Not as much as Bruce Jenner, obviously. <laughs> now Caitlyn Jenner, of course. What a year she's had. She became a role model for trans people everywhere, showing great bravery in breaking down barriers and destroying stereotypes. She didn't do a lot for women drivers, but... <laughs> I never knew you were this weird. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, because you, you kept it... You, we we yeah. worked together for a couple of days. And you, I know. You're absolutely mental. <laughs> in, a, in a nice way? Yeah. 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 But so... so... We're so restless. We're too reckless. Without you here. I think I care less. So I fall down. And I keep doing things in the wrong way. 
No one cares about movies anymore. No one goes to the cinema. No one really watches network TV. Everyone's watching Netflix. This show should just be me coming out going, well done, Netflix, you win everything. Good night. But no, no, we've got to drag it out for three hours. You could binge watch the entire first season of Afterlife instead of watching this show. That, that's a show about a man who wants to kill himself because his wife dies of cancer. And it's still more fun than this, OK? <laughs> Spoiler alert, um, season two is on the way, so in the end, he obviously didn't kill himself. Just like Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Shut up. I know he's your friend, but I don't care. <laughs> a few years ago, on this show, I made a joke about Mel Gibson getting a bit drunk and saying a few unsavoury things. We've all done it. I wasn't judging him. But now I find myself in the awkward position of having to introduce him again. <laughs> Listen, I'm sure it's embarrassing for both of us, OK? And I blame NBC for this terrible situation. Mal blames... We know who Mal blames. Listen, I still feel a bit bad for it, right? Mel's forgotten all about it, apparently. That's what drinking does. No. <laughs> I want to say something nice about Mel before he comes out. Um, so... Oh, yeah, OK. Here you go. I'd rather have a drink with him in his hotel room tonight than with Bill Cosby. <laughs> Please, Malcolm. Mel Gibson! Yeah. I love seeing Ricky once every three years because it reminds me to get a colonoscopy. <laughs> uh. so I just, I just I... feel like I'm, I'm not long for this world. Oh, well, you, you're my fine. Nan, you... My nan used to say that. My nan said that for about 20 years. She used to say, oh, I won't see Christmas, right? Yeah. She was right eventually. Yeah, obviously. well... <laughs> well, the last, the last one. Eventually, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, come I don't on. worry about it anyway. I don't care. I don't, don't care. No, I don't worry about being dead. So, uh, um, do you, you, you don't know about it. That's the best thing about being dead. You don't know about it. It's like being stupid. It's only painful for others. So I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I don't... In three Tom Hanks movies. <laughs> <laughs> Toy Story 1, 2 and 3. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> He uh, got a job painting the weapons research establishment in, in, in England. As they were going in, this sort of policeman with his helmet on had to check underneath with a, you know, the stick on the mirror. Yeah, to just make sure there's the... no bomb exactly. or anything, yeah. And as he was doing that, his helmet fell off and 20 cigarettes fell out on the floor, right? Mm -hmm. And the policeman, just being nice to my brother, said, I bet you've always wondered what we keep under our helmets. And my brother went, I knew it wasn't f***ing brains. <laughs> <laughs> This weird. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, because you, you kept it. You, we were yeah. working together for a couple of days. And did, I know. You're absolutely mental. <laughs> in, a, in a nice way? Yeah. 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 But the, so. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to go out there. I'm not trying to ruin their night. I'm making jokes, mm -hmm. you know. And yep. also, I, I do it about things they've done, not, a, you know, not about things they can't help. So, I, I, you know, I think I'm fair. Do you know, I know, yes. but you know what I mean. No, you no, know. no, you're not, you're not making fun of a way they, were, they look or no, how they were... No, I, I wouldn't come out and go, oh, look, it's a ginger Frankenstein. <laughs> I, I, There's not even any water here. Can I have a drink of water? <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm the oh, new baby. Oh, you've got some. Well, new... Oh, brilliant. Yeah, I bought this myself. You have to buy your own now, the baby. Look at you. That's a queen. You want that? That's a pound I want from you. Yeah. That's a pound. Okay, let's do an interview. What we should do is show you uh, a game. It's, a, it's called, oh, caption, my caption. And you'll look at a photo, and then you'll give us a caption for that photo. Just okay. based on what, the, what you see. Yeah. Oh. Wow. 
is the kid saying to the baby, touch my toys and you die. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> okay. Look at the kid on the left. Yeah. Is he signaling to the police? These yeah, are not yeah. my... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> her face, her face is... Are they just married? Yeah. Look at, Look at is her. Is she saying, what the f have I done? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <clears throat> Mum, when can we afford a scarecrow? <laughs> I've got it. Making bacon. <laughs> the town in Minnesota has cancelled plans to change the name of a street called Stoner Avenue. <laughs> it's a weird street. And instead of saying stop, all the signs say, chill, bro. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry. I'm um, saying, so yeah, you're, not, you're, you're not, still, you're not giving them, you know, they come out, <laughs> they, they park their cars, they've got babies that they haven't paid. Why would you? That'd be mental. But, <laughs> But if I was you, I'd be going, thank you so much, these people, and giving them, you know what I mean? Yeah, it but was, I'm not doing that. It was soddy. It was, um, I mean, you, you know, you, did, you didn't write it, and that's... But do it like... But do it like it's your own. Do it like you were clever enough to come up with this joke yourself. OK? <laughs> you look pumped, buffed, and cut. <laughs> you, I mean, you, you are ready to go. Thank you. When, when did this happen, for God's sakes? Um, it's been a gradual process. Yeah. Well, what over, is your goal? Over uh, 50 years. Uh-huh. Started off really small. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what's well, the matter with your voice? I've got a sore throat. Ah. So that's, that's it. How long have you had the sore throat? Just a couple of days. See, now, I had a sore throat and, uh, around the holidays. It's all and about I just, you, isn't it? It's all I, about you. It, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mentioning Jane, y'all been together for 35 years, I know. which is a wonderful yeah. amount of time. And I think I think you and I are. They're clapping her, aren't they? Really? Yeah, they're they're, they, they're going well done, Jane. Yeah, How yeah. did you do that? We don't know her, but wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If we're out or something, I, I I sort of like lag behind and get Jane by herself with no one, on, and I take a picture of her and I tweet Jane with all her friends. <laughs> Yeah. So, so, like, imagine. So, so uh, here's here's one you tweeted of Jane. Jane thinking about making new friends. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, Jane, look at those crows. <laughs> <laughs> but does she not know you're doing it? Does no, she not, not think? Where time. is he? She, Where is he? She sees the tweet. <laughs> uh, this, Jane thought she'd made a new friend, but it was just a shadow. <laughs> The next one, just found this photo of Jane when she was little. <laughs> there had to be a gift. You must have given her a gift after yeah. that. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's what being in a relationship for 30 years does. Uh, Jane is looking so happy because her new friend hasn't walked away yet. <laughs> You're 65 this Thursday, aren't That's you? That's correct, yes. You can't use this till Thursday. This is official. I got you a bus pass and senior citizens. <laughs> oh, it's a Metro card. There it is. <laughs> so, uh, name three things you can cover with chocolate. Um, a cake, yourself, someone else. <laughs> What is the worst thing about getting older? When I get up in the morning, I have to walk downstairs like that till they thaw out. <laughs> Honestly, I've got <laughs> stiff back, stiff legs. I'm losing my hair. Yeah, it's yeah, just, it's, it's all bad. Um, but do uh, you, do you just name one thing. Just one thing. You have to pick one. Pendulous testicles. <laughs> You'd like to be like an evil supervillain. Yeah, that'd be good. What would your power be? Do you think? Oh, I don't know. I haven't thought it through. I didn't know. I had, do I have to have a car? I just, I'd be annoying. I'm really annoyed. <laughs> I could do that. You'd be the not most... just a no super. You'd be yeah. super annoying. Yeah. Anyone that came to Batman would go, "Oh, f this is just." <laughs> <laughs> it could, it just, it just... You see what I'm doing there? Yeah. Hey, you try it. No, I can't. Come on. It's the only. This will get rid this, of. Sorry. Huh? How is this not a breakdown? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Are you? <laughs> 
Are you gonna, are you, I'm trying to help you. That's amazing. But, available for streaming. I've never seen you so animated. Uh, that was amazing. Thank you. On it's, Netflix. I uh, thought you were giving up. Okay. <laughs> no, this is, this is, no. No, I, I honestly just thought you were seeing this out, waiting, biding the time out. I was well, thinking you, of, I wouldn't be long till I was there. Oh, and now... Yeah. Well, that, you, you think, maybe I should. Maybe, no, huh? you've got a second win. To go oh. for it. Why would you... I'm a big, big star in Finland. Are you really? Yes. What do you mean, are you really? It's probably... <laughs> I don't know why you'd be sceptical. Well, I don't you... know why you'd be here if you're a big star in Finland. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Getting caught in the zipper. <laughs> Does that does that mean this zipper? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, that that's yep. never happened. Just one of the advantages of, of having a very small penis. <laughs> and you're a, you're a sweetie pie. Yeah, but everyone's sweet when they're little, aren't they? I mean, Hitler was probably cute when he was that age, wasn't he? <laughs> it's just, they do go, oh, Adolf, you are adorable. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then things happen. We yeah. all, you know. Ricky Gervais has a new game show here on ABC called Child Support, and he really wanted to be here to promote it in person, but he's very busy not being here to promote it in person. So he, s he made a video, he sent a video, and I don't know exactly what the nature of the video is. Yeah, hi, Jimmy. Um, sorry I'm not there in person, but, you know, um, I can't be bothered. <laughs> to be honest. But I've seen the show, I get the gist of it. Um, so, because Portia and I have been together for 13 years now, and, oh. and I feel like people still ask us if we're going to have kids, and it's like, we're not, and people no. still... No, they, they, they ask me all the time in the press, why don't you have children? Which is a really odd question to ask someone, why don't you have children? Yeah. As opposed to asking people, why do you have <laughs> yeah. children? Do you know what I mean? And I flew a few weeks after 9-11, and, um, and after 9-11, the world went a little bit crazy, you know, understandably. The rules changed, and there was a lot of anger and fear and confusion and finger-pointing. And um, I'd always consider myself quite a rational, liberal sort of guy, um, and I tried to remain that way after 9-11, um, and even in, like... Uh, in the pub with mates, I'd be the ones going, no, you can't say that. No, that's a generalisation. That's, that's ridiculous. No, no that's, that's unfair. You can't tie everyone with the same brush. No, it's still the safest form of transport. It's 16 million to one, the chance of a, you know, trying to be rational. That's in a pub. When I'm flying, it's more like, check him again. Can we check him again? <laughs> He's getting on this, but do you mind if I check him? Can I just, can I just... And uh, after 9-11, with all the checks, I still tried to remain sort of rational and philosophical. I was thinking, right, it's, it's harder now than it ever was to get a bomb on the plane. This is, you know, it's, it's, the restrictions are tight. It's safer now. And then I found out that a, a, a terrorist doesn't even have to get on the plane now with a bomb. They found heat-seeking missiles, and they could just park up in some sort of lay-by and take the plane out within the first 10 minutes of takeoff. So now I'd be on the plane going, right, we're out of range. Who's got the bomb, right? <laughs> And, uh, as I say, I flew a, a couple of weeks after 9-11, internal f
We'd just be on the news. I'd probably be the only one get name checked on the news. You'd be 230 others, but uh, which is some consolation. <laughs> but anyway, so, okay. Once I was flying back from New York, okay, uh, 9.25, a Saturday night, JFK to London Heathrow. BA, first class. Okay. <laughs> now, this is my point. It's fear that threatens rational thought, I think. Okay? I'm there. Now, the whole week leading up to that flight, I don't know if you remember it, or it's happened more than once, I don't know, it was a couple of years ago, on every news channel in America, there was a rolling ticker tape that said, America on red alert. We've had intel there's going to be another 9-11 in a major city, probably New York or LA, okay, this weekend. Do not fly unless you absolutely had to, right? I had to, I was filming. And, um... <laughs> Right. So, I'm the only one in the first class lounge, okay? And I still tried to remain rational. I was thinking, no, it's safer now. Everyone's looking for a terrorist today. They'll leave it till Monday, right? <laughs> and then it happened. The thing that threatened my rational thought. I had a little a bit of a mini breakdown. Into the first class lounge, about 30 minutes before boarding, came this guy. I don't know whether he was North African or Middle Eastern or Asian, but he had all the gear, right? <laughs> Beard, steered attaché case, okay? And here's your middle class sort of liberal. I went... <laughs> I was suddenly engaging staff in sort of banal conversation, going, flight on time, they're going, yeah. I What's the weather like in London? Like they were going to go, it's a bit cloudy, but there he is, right? <laughs> Didn't happen, so I'm left there, right? And I'm looking over at him, and I'm thinking of all the, the running up to it and the week, and all the news and everything. But now there's a fight between good and evil, between rational and irrational, okay? This one goes, ooh, that's a suicide bomber. <laughs> oh, don't be stupid, of course it isn't. It is. How do you know? That's what they look like. <laughs> what? Beard. <laughs> Don't be stupid, right? Then he makes a phone call, and I couldn't understand what he was saying, but he sounded a bit angry, okay? This one goes, oh, we made a phone call, right? This one, no, you just made a phone call. Yeah, but not in foreign. <laughs> right? Shut up, right? He's been checked, like the rest of us, he's been checked. Did they check the beard? Yeah, they checked the beard. Yeah, they checked the beard. Right? And then I'm looking at him, must have been absent-minded with all this going on in my head, and he catches me looking, and he does this. He goes, oh, he knows, he knows. Right? This one goes, no, he knows why you're looking at him. He's had that sort of prejudice for months now. Stop looking at him. Look at the beard. Yeah, right? But this one starts winning. The fear starts beating all the rational thought in the world. And he was going, no, but it could be. Well, yeah, it could be. Probably not. Well, no. The stats are up today. Yeah, but uh, still, it won't happen. To, don't say it won't happen to us. People of 9-11 said it wouldn't happen to them. Yeah, but all the tests. Yeah, well, they find new ways of getting through our detection. Then we have to up the game. Yeah, you're right. And suddenly I thought, oh, my God, this is it. This is it. And that wave of nausea. And you suddenly realise, oh, my God, I'm witnessing this. This one goes, okay, right, let's report him. This one goes, no, why? In case someone thinks we're racist. <laughs> no, fuck that. Let's, let's report him and be a, a wrong, embarrassed, live racist, just in case. Right? And I go, no, so I don't. And so now I think he is a suicide bomber, and I think I'm going to get on the plane and die but I'm not going to do anything about it, and I'm nearly in tears. And all this happens in a few moments, and I look over, and he's joined by his wife, who's got all the gear, and um, <laughs> his two little girls, okay, and I suddenly go, oh, of course he's not a fucking suicide bomber. If you're off to see 72 virgins, you don't take the wife and kids along. <laughs> uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Ricky Gervais!
Hello. Hello and welcome to the 67th annual Golden Globe Awards, live from Los Angeles. I'm Ricky Gervais. Um, thank you. You, uh, you probably know me as the creator of The Office. <laughs> no, you don't, do you? You think Steve Carell, did you? Oh, oh, he's brilliant, isn't he, Steve Carell? He's amazing as the bumbling office manager. Where does he get his ideas from? <laughs> Let's pay... Let's pay him hundreds of millions of dollars and put him in every movie. If you can't be bothered to go to the cinema to see Steve in action, then um, just watch him every Thursday here on NBC. <laughs> or if you think that particular version of the show has jumped the shark a little bit, um, <laughs> that's what some of the forums are saying, then um, watch the original Fridays on Adult Swim. <laughs> or get the box set, that's still available. So. Um, <laughs> Just, just, just 12 episodes in a special. Quality, not quantity. That's what, that's what counts. I, uh, so, uh, go and get that. Um, I will be making the most of this opportunity. I'm not used to these sort of viewing figures. <laughs> Let's face it, nor is NBC. So, <laughs> on a serious note, just looking at all the faces here reminds me of some of the great work that's been done this year by cosmetic surgeons. Um, <laughs> you all look great. I've had a little bit of work done. I've had cheek implants. Uh, they put them there, which is annoying. <laughs> and I, uh, I've had a penis reduction. <laughs> Just got the one now. That's enough. Uh, and, and it is very tiny. <laughs> But so are my hands, so when I'm holding it, it looks pretty big. <laughs> and let's face it, I usually am holding it. Um, but I wish I was doing that now instead of this, to be honest. But let's... It is an honour to be here um, in a room full of what I consider to be the most important people on the planet. Actors. They're just... They're just better than ordinary people, aren't they? That's, no, they're, 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 we all know that. Um, imagine a world without actors. Oh, God, it doesn't bear thinking about it. Imagine if they ever went on strike. Oh, what would we do? You couldn't replace them. You couldn't replace them with any other profession, lawyers or doctors. Can you imagine a real surgeon doing what Hugh Laurie does in-house? It would be pathetic. He'd be all over the place. He'd be going, oh, where do I stand? How's my American accent? What, what's my lines? You know, Hugh with the aid of coaches that can eventually learn his lines while saving lives. He's a genius. <laughs> How could you replace Kiefer Sutherland in 24? I'd love to see a real anti-terrorist agent try and defuse a bomb in a busy train station in one hour. <laughs> Some of those scenes, by the way, where Kiefer grabs someone and beats them to a pulp, they weren't even in the script. Um, <laughs> The director just said, keep rolling, we'll work it into the... <laughs> but actors aren't just loved here in Hollywood, they are loved the world over, because they're recognisable. You can be anywhere, you could be in the third world, okay, and you get a glimpse of a Hollywood star, and it makes you feel better, okay? You could be a little, a little child, a little Asian child, with no possessions and no money, but you get a, you see a picture of Angelina Jolie, and you think, oh, mummy! <laughs> Let's get on with it before NBC replaced me with Jay Leno. Um, <laughs> well, it's going well, isn't it? We've had, uh, we've seen some worthy winners and some not so worthy ones. Let's be, no, I'm not going to mention them now, am I? I'll be doing that on my blog at rickygervais.com. <laughs> I've had thousands of emails over the past few days saying, why, oh why, was the invention of lying not nominated? <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know. Maybe the DVD will win an award. That's out Tuesday at Walmart. <laughs> so go and buy that. Um, one thing that can't be bought is a Golden Globe. 
officially. <laughs> I'm not going to do this again anyway. Um, <laughs> but if you were <laughs> to buy one, the man to see would be Philip Burke. <laughs> to... The, uh, the next category contains a couple of legends, one of which we've already seen, Sir Paul McCartney, fellow Brit, so good luck to him. I shouldn't be biased, but uh, we actually came over on the same flight. I didn't get to speak to him because I was up the front in um, first class and he was behind me in coach, um, <laughs> saving money. He spent an awful lot last year. I don't think we have to feel too sorry for him. He's doing all right. I'm a thing... Um, the serious bit now. Um, the Golden Globes is shown all over the world. It is oblivious to colour or creed. It doesn't just celebrate talent, it celebrates difference. It crushes prejudice and stereotype. One stereotype I hate is that all Irishmen are just drunk, sweary hellraisers. Please welcome Colin Farrell. <laughs> Um, this next category is a bit of a downer, to be honest. It's for writing. Um, <laughs> we all know writers get way too much credit in Hollywood. Um, <laughs> and that's due to the generosity of actors sometimes mentioning them. Do you know what I mean? But what would writers do without actors? I don't want to keep going on about actors, but they're the most important ones, OK? <laughs> it's not the words you say, it's how good you look when you're saying them. That everyone knows that. And the, the great thing about actors is they want to keep moving forward. They're chameleons, ever-changing and leaving the past behind. Please welcome Rachel off Friends and that bloke from 300. <laughs> Hello. Calm down. Calm down. We're on the home straight. The next presenter is an award-winning actress with special powers. In Die Another Day, she used her powers of seduction to win over James Bond. In X-Men, she used her powers to control the elements. In Catwoman, she used the power of being able to wash herself all over. And <laughs> She's the paw for behind the ear. It's brilliant. <laughs> How you doing, all right? Cheers. Um, I've had a couple. I'm not going to lie to you. Now listen up. Um, I hope I haven't offended anyone. I didn't mean it's not my fault. There's a lot of powerful people here, so if I said it's. Honestly, I like a drink as much as the next man. Unless the next man is Mel Gibson. The next presenter is not only one of uh, Hollywood's best actors, he's also one of the coolest men in the world. I haven't got a, a bad word to say about him, mostly because he's got arms as big as my legs. Please welcome the amazing Mickey Rourke. Well, um, that's it. I've, we've got about eight seconds, so thank you so much. Well done to all the winners. And if I could have one wish, it would be peace on earth. No, can I change that? I want everyone to watch the Ricky Gervais show on HBO. Live from the Starfield International Ballroom of the Beverly Hilton Hotel, welcome to the cinnamon, Ricky Gervais. Thank you. Hello, and hello. Welcome to the 68th Annual Golden Globe Awards, live from the Beverly Hilton Hotel in Los Angeles. It's going to be a night of partying and heavy drinking. Or as Charlie Sheen calls it, breakfast. 
Wow. Whoa. So, let's get this straight. What he did was, he, uh, he picked up a porn star, um, paid her to have dinner with him, uh, introduced her to his ex-wife, as you do, uh, <laughs> Uh, went to a hotel, uh, got, got drunk, got naked, trashed the place while she was locked in a cupboard. And uh, <laughs> that was a Monday. What, what did he do New Year's Eve? <laughs> anyway, welcome. The Golden Globes is a celebration of the best in TV and movies over the last year, voted for by the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. It was a big year for 3D movies, Toy Story, Despicable Me, Tron. Seems like everything this year was three-dimensional. Except the characters in The Tourist. Um, I, I feel bad about that joke. I, no, no, I'll tell you why. I'm jumping on the bandwagon, because I haven't even seen The Tourist. Who has? Um, but, no, it must be good, because it's nominated. So shut up, OK? And I'd like to quash this ridiculous rumour going round that the only reason The Tourist was nominated was so the Hollywood Foreign Press could hang out with Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie. That is, that is rubbish. That is not the only reason. They also accepted bribes. Let's... No. All that happened was some of them were taken to see Cher in concert. How the hell is that a bribe? Really? Do you want to go and see Cher? No. Why not? Because it's not 1975. <laughs> there were a lot of big films that didn't get nominated this year. Nothing for Sex in the City 2. Um, no, I was sure the Golden Globe for special effects would go to the team that airbrushed that poster. Um, <laughs> well, great job. Girls, we know how old you are. I saw one of you in an episode of Bonanza. <laughs> also not nominated, I love you, Philip Morris, um, Jim, Jim Carrey and Ewan McGregor, two heterosexual actors pretending to be gay. So the complete opposite of some famous Scientologist then. Um, <laughs> what? what? Probably. My lawyers helped me with the wording of that joke. <laughs> They're not here. OK. <laughs> There's been some great new TV drama this year, like Boardwalk Empire and The Walking Dead. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Talking of The Walking Dead, congratulations to Hugh Hefner, who, uh, who's getting married at the age of 84 to 24-year-old beauty, Crystal Harris. Um, when she was asked why she was marrying him, she said, because he lied about his age. He told me he was 94. Oh, come on. Um, don't worry. Hold out and just, just don't look at it when you touch it. That's <laughs> I warned them. Um, one of the biggest events in TV this year was the finale of Lost, one of my favourites, and uh, all the questions were answered, yeah. Um, I have to say, though, it was quite a complicated finale. I'm not sure I totally understood it all, but from what I can make out, I'm pretty sure the fat one ate them all. Uh, I, I think... Should we get on with it? Our first presenter is beautiful, talented, and Jewish, apparently. Mel Gibson told me that. He's obsessed. Um, <laughs> please welcome Scarlett Johansson. You know our next presenter from such films as Hudson Hawk, Look Who's Talking, Mercury Rising, <laughs> Colour of Night, Fifth Element, yeah. Heart's War. Please welcome Ashton Kutcher's dad, Bruce Willis. <laughs> 
Sometimes Hollywood does, uh, Hollywood does provide you with outrageous fortune. Next up, Eva Longoria has the daunting task of introducing the president of the Hollywood Foreign Press. That's nothing. I just had to help him off the toilet and pop his teeth in. Um, it was messy. Please welcome Eva Longoria. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of the Hollywood Foreign Press, Philip Burke. Thank you, Eva. And Ricky, next time you want me to help you qualify your movies, go to another guy. All right. I love this next presenter. He's so cool. Um, he's the star of Iron Man. Two girls and a guy. Wonder Boys. Sorry, these porn films. What? <laughs> kiss, kiss, bang, bang. <laughs> Bowfinger. Really? Yeah. Up the Academy. Come on. He has done all those films, but many of you in this room probably know him best from such facilities as the Betty Ford Clinic and Los Angeles County Jail. Please welcome Robert Downey Jr. Aside from the fact uh, that it's been hugely mean-spirited with mildly sinister undertones. I'd say the vibe of the show is pretty good so far, wouldn't you? <laughs> I, uh, I consider myself a veteran of sorts, and I've made uh, somewhat of a study of this. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong. I don't know if an actress can do her best work until I slept with her. <laughs> Julianne. <clears throat> told her that I was working with strange new feelings that were confusing me, Angie. <laughs> Only to have her blow me off halfway through the shoot like it never happened, Annette. <laughs> or casually mention that her boyfriend is coming for a location visit because he misses her and what they have is real. Then have the gall to invite me to join them at a three-top for dinner, Anne. <laughs> Why? Now, I'm not trying to creep anyone out, but where's Emma? <laughs> I, I think I got something for us. It's kind of like a blue Valentine thing, but not age appropriate. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that my theory doesn't hold water, but somehow all of these women rendered exquisite performances without a shred of help from me, so I guess I'm just saying if I could, I'd give it to all five of you. <laughs> no. At once. The award. Right here. Center stage. In front of my wife. The audience. And millions of viewers. Our next presenters are two of the funniest people in America. She stole the show on Saturday Night Live, then went on to create, write, and star in her own show, 30 Rock. He was a jobbing actor, career not going that well, if I'm being totally honest, who, who got his big break when I cast him in a remake of a show that I created called The Office. He's now leaving that show and killing a cash cow for both of us. Please welcome the wonderful Tina Fey and the ungrateful Steve Carell. Never gets old. <laughs> Tonight, uh, we
We stand before you not as Golden Globe Award winners, but as writers. Don't turn the channel. We're still stars. But as stars who are also writers, it gives us great pleasure to honor the nominees for Best Screenplay. Screenplays we could have written if we had had time. <laughs> like the one about the mountain climber. I would have given my right arm to have written that. There's a story of a couple of lesbians. It's just a lesbian couple. Ah. There's a long, complicated sci-fi thriller starring Leonardo DiCaprio, not unlike my dreams. Mine as well. There's also the story of Britain's King George V.I. The sixth. V.I. And finally, the true life story of social networking and how it ruined our ability to interact one on one. I heard about that movie on Facebook from a friend I never met. Welcome back. Now, our next presenters are young and thin, with hair and teeth. They're lovely to look at, which is just as well, because they're presenting the award for Best Foreign Language Film, a category that no one in America cares about. Please welcome Olivia Wilde and Robert Pattinson. Jeremy Irons. Here are the nominees for Best Supporting Actress in a Motion Picture. OK. What can I say about our next two presenters? The first is an actor, producer, writer and director whose movies have grossed over three and a half billion dollars at the box office. He's won two Academy Awards and three Golden Globes for his powerful and varied performances, starring in such films as Philadelphia, Forrest Gump, Castaway, Apollo 13 and Saving Private Ryan. The other is Tim Allen. Well, you know, like, like many of you, we recall back when Ricky Gervais was a slightly chubby but very kind co comedian. Yeah. Neither of which is he now. Hello, and welcome back. The next presenter is a national treasure, Miss Congeniality herself. This down-to-earth girl next door first stole our hearts as a bus driver and then as a railway fare collector. Now, of course, she wouldn't be seen dead on public transport, because as she just said to me backstage, poor people are gross and they smell bad. Please welcome Sandra Bullock. Thank you very much. That's about it. Um, well done. Justice there. Thanks, everyone in the room, for being good sports. Thanks to NBC. Thanks to the Hollywood Foreign Press. Um, thank you for watching at home. And thank you to God for making me an atheist. Thank you. Globes uh, on NBC. Okay. Our next presenter is the Queen of Pop. Not you, Alton. Sit down. This is... She's all woman. I'll give you some clues. She's always vogue. She's a material girl. And she's just like a virgin. <clears throat> Please welcome Madonna. If I'm still just like a virgin, Ricky, then why don't you come over here and do something about it? I haven't kissed a girl in a few years. On TV.
Thank you. That's it. Um, congratulations to all the nominees uh, and all the winners. And uh, thank you so much for coming. And I hope you enjoyed the goodie bags and the champagne and the gold. I hope that took your mind off the recession for a little while. Thanks. Good night. I bought a suit for this. I thought I was going to be on TV. I'm such a moron. I am losing so much money right now. And I want everyone in America right now to look at me. Look at me smoking indoors. <laughs> I didn't ask anybody. I just did it. What are they going to do? Kick me out before I get the prize? No, nigga. This is called leverage. Our next presenters are two of the funniest people in America. She stole the show on Saturday Night Live, then went on to create, write, and star in her own show, 30 Rock. He was a jobbing actor, career not going that well, if I'm being totally honest, who, who got his big break when I cast him in a remake of a show that I created called The Office. He's now leaving that show and killing a cash cow for both of us. Please welcome the wonderful Tina Fey and the ungrateful Steve Carell. Oh, Julia Roberts, you live next to me at the beach, you know that. <laughs> Thanks for all the visits. Anyway, uh, I'm living about two blocks from you. The broad never shows up. Come by and say hello. You're closer than two blocks. <laughs> you have no lines, Julia, just nod. <laughs> anyway. Uh, and the winner, uh, the Grammy goes to Natalia Lafourcade. <laughs> oh, wait. Dude, you, oh, I will, oh, sorry. I will accept on behalf of her. If I butchered her name, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here, you know, and I was asked to uh, host the ESPYs this year. Yeah, hi, that's my name, Esma. <laughs> when I was asked to host the ESPYs this year, folks, I said yes immediately for one reason and one reason only. Uh, this show has interns. <laughs> It wasn't the only epic movie. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, nearly three hours long, Leonardo DiCaprio attended the premiere, and by the end, his date was too old for him. So... All right. Hey, how many uh, feminists are, like, going nuts? How, why is this cis white male doing all this Latino stuff? Uh, and the Grammy goes to Grupo Niche. Hey. Niche. You know, when I was asked to host the Canadian Screen Awards, I called my good friend Chris Rock, and I said to him, I've got some great news, Chris, I'm going to Canada. And he said, I've got some great news, too. I'm hosting the Oscars. What are you doing in Canada? <laughs> and I said, uh, you know, I'm visiting some family, friends. Up there. No one cares about movies anymore. No one goes to the cinema. No one really watches network TV. Everyone's watching Netflix. This show should just be me coming out going, well done, Netflix, you win everything. Good night. But no, no, we've got to drag it out for three hours. You could binge watch the entire first season of Afterlife instead of watching this show. That, that's a show about a man who wants to kill himself because his wife dies of cancer. And it's still more fun than this, OK? <laughs> Spoiler alert, um, season two is on the way. So in the end, he obviously didn't kill himself. Just like Jeffrey Epstein. Shut up. I know he's your friend, but I don't care. Sorry, I wasn't listening to that one. I'm going to butcher this. And the Grammy goes to Hil Hilder Gunadutar for Joker. Yeah, the Nuggets are having a bad year this year, man. Matter of fact, they're making a film about the team. They got a pretty catchy title. It's uh, Black Men Can't Jump Either. <laughs> One Hollywood publication said that me hosting would mean that some film stars would stay away for fear of being made fun of. As if film stars would stay away from the chance of winning a Golden Globe. Particularly if their film company has already paid for it. Mr. Don Rickles. Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen. Why did they stand? Was it a Jewish holiday? No, I... Don, because you're you. That was very sweet of you folks to stand. <laughs> Next time, just leave a check by the door, I think. Talking of The Walking Dead, congratulations to Hugh Hefner, who uh, is 
getting married at the age of 84 to 24 year old beauty Crystal Harris. Um, when she was asked why she was marrying him, she said because he lied about his age. He told me he was 94. Oh, come on. Um, don't worry. Hold out and just, just don't look at it when you touch it. That's done. This is great. O.J. Simpson jury right here in the front. <laughs> Black, black gentleman's laughing. It's a little you laugh. <laughs> the teleprompter is sort of flashing. I think I we're see. supposed to oh, get back to the... Oh, really? Because yes. it's a hot show. Let's read these funny lines. <laughs> let's, let's read these funny lines they wrote for us. Okay. <laughs> Talking of all you perverts, it was a big year... It was a big year for paedophile movies. Um, surviving R. Kelly, Leaving Neverland, Two Popes... <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. I don't care. I don't care. And there's Charles Woodson. How about that? Oh, what a season he had. Great, man. He, he became the first defensive player to win the Heisman Trophy. And congratulations, Charles. That is something that no one can ever take away from you. Unless you kill your wife and a waiter, in which case... <laughs> It's like, uh, I don't know much about writers, you know? I used to think you guys were a bunch of nerds who couldn't hold up your end of the conversation, you know, with strange shoes. I did. Lots of big celebrities here tonight. I mean, legends, icons, yeah? Look, at this table alone. Uh, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro. But... <laughs> Baby Yoda. Uh, oh, that's, that's Joe Pesci, sorry. Um, just backstage, uh, a lot of celebrities back there, man. I was talking to Jerry Jones, you know, the Cowboys owner, and uh, he's disappointed, obviously. Yeah. Well, he's a good guy, though, man. He's, he's talking about rebuilding the team, you know. And he told me, he says, we have to get back to what made us a championship team. Strippers and crack. <laughs> it was a big year for 3D movies. Toy Story, Despicable Me, Tron. Seems like everything this year was three-dimensional. Except the characters in The Tourist. Um, I, I feel bad about that joke. I, no, no, I'll tell you why. I'm jumping on the bandwagon, because I haven't even seen The Tourist. Who has? Um, but, no, it must be good, because it's nominated. So shut up, okay? <laughs> And I'd like to quash this ridiculous rumour going round that the only reason the tourist was nominated was so the Hollywood Foreign Press could hang out with Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie. That is, that is rubbish. That is not the only reason. They also accepted bribes. Let's... 